Mengu, talking about assembly of stellar envelopes in galaxy clusters. Um, hello. <laughs> Thank you for the introduction. Uh, my name is Mengu. I'm a fifth year grad student at Howard University. And I want to thank the organizers for uh, giving me the chance to talk about my work. And I want to thank my collaborators for making the two works I'm going to present possible. There are already many great talks in this week showing how massive galaxies grow hierarchically along with their underlying dark matter structures. And for early type galaxies, recent studies have revealed that they follow scaling relations between their stellar mass or central velocity dispersion and their stellar population properties. The figure here I'm showing uh, a study on a large sample of Sloan early type galaxies led by Daniel Thomas in 2010. So the figure here compares the relation between the light-weighted stellar age, uh, the alpha, alpha to iron ratio, and uh, the central velocity dispersion. Let's focus on the orange contours here, which represents the uh, old red sequence. And this and a lot of uh, other observations have found that uh, for early type galaxies, the more massive galaxies are older, uh, more metal rich, and more alpha enhanced compared to low mass galaxies which means more massive galaxies are formed earlier and in more intense star formation. And the building blocks of more massive galaxies would imprint their uh, stellar population information on the outskirts of massive galaxies. Study the stellar population at large radii is hard, but it is, it is also very useful. The figure here is from a study led by Ben Cook in 2016 they use the illustrious simulation to see uh, the evolution of the mean metallicity and surface brightness profile from redshift uh, 1 to 0, during which the evolution is dominated by X-C2 mergers. And they found that uh, in the central region of galaxy clusters, there is actually no significant evolution. But at the outskirts, the metallicity profile is flattened out from redshift, from redshift 1 to 0. And this tells us that the fossil record um, at large radii can help us study the assembling history. And with these motivations, I'm going to talk about our works on two galaxy clusters. I'm going to present the stellar population analysis uh, on a special galaxy cluster, about 3827. We can see there are uh, five nuclear galaxies in the center, and they are involved in a uh, future BCG assembly. We are going to compare the stellar population scaling relation in this special environment against the general uh, early type galaxy sample. This galaxy cluster has been uh, observed by MUSE. There are certain early type galaxies in the, uh, in the field of view with enough signal to noise ratio. And for the central five uh, galaxies from their uh, proximity, on the sky plane and in the radio velocity space, we can estimate they are, that they are going to merge into a massive BCG in the near future. So we have the chance to directly analyze the building blocks uh, of a prospective BCG. And we study their stellar population within one kiloparsec. In order to do that, we use a full spectral absorption line feeder which is designed to model the stellar population uh, with ages older than one gig year and metallicity from uh, minus 2 to 0.25. Uh, the code adopts the MIST stellar isochron and uses a new stellar library with very wide uh, wavelength coverage. And the parameter space uh, is, is explored uh, by an MCMC algorithm. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, previous studies revealed that more massive galaxies are older, more metal rich, and more alpha enhanced. However, in special environments such as the cluster centers, uh, things may be different. Here, for the certain early type galaxies in the field of view, uh, I'm comparing the, the relation between their stellar age uh, measured within 1 kbc and the, their stellar mass measured within 5 kbc on the left. And on the right is a relation between the magnesium to iron ratio and their stellar mass. I plot uh, the scaling relation for the 
overall population in the uh, gray lines here. This is from a study led by Charlie Conrad in 2014. And from this figure, we can see that uh, the early type galaxies in the cluster centers are, are old, and they are uh, always uh, alpha enhanced, and which makes the scaling relation they follow very different from the scaling relations followed by the uh, general population. And we think this rare case actually uh, indicates an interesting scenario, and uh, we would like to refer to this as uh, the coordinated assembly of massive galaxies. This tells us that influenced by the uh, dense environment, the star formation history of the small galaxies in the cluster centers are quenched uh, earlier and more uh, abruptly compared to their counterparts in the field, uh, which will result in their old stellar age and uh, high alpha abundance. Therefore, they follow a much shallower uh, scaling relation compared to the general population. And when these low mass galaxies fall into the galaxy cluster center, uh, merge with the BCGs and distribute their stars on the outskirts uh, of these BCGs, we would, we would expect to see uh, old and alpha enhanced stellar contents in the outskirts of massive galaxies as well. However, if there is no such coordination, we would expect to see uh, young and less alpha enhanced stellar content in the stellar envelope of BCGs. And this can be directly tested with our data. We carefully choose the regions to study the radio profiles of the five uh, central galaxies from their center out to 14 kiloparsecs. So on the right uh, panel, the, the white dashed lines indicate the mass of regions, and the, the solid lines enclose the regions we adopted for the uh, radio profile study. And from the radio profile of velocity dispersion, we can see that they rise with increasing radii. This could be due to the uh, complex nature uh, of mergers. And as expected for early type galaxies, their stellar metallicity decreased uh, with increasing radii. And more importantly, on the right side, we can see that the stellar age, uh, even at the outskirts of these five nuclear galaxies, uh, they're old. And they have flat radio profiles of magnesium to iron ratio. And actually, old and flat uh, age radio profile and uh, flat alpha abundance profile have been uh, observed in other studies as, as well. And we think they are consistent with the coordinated assembling picture we propose. Next, I'm going to switch to another object, the coma cluster. I'm going to, okay, I'm going to show uh, the stellar population beyond 100 kiloparsecs. We use the data from the Manga survey. Uh, this is already very well introduced in Kevin's talk yesterday. And our data comes from one of the ancillary programs. We call it the Deep Coma Program. There are different types of uh, objects uh, in our sample. There are massive early type galaxies. There are dwarf ellipticals. Uh, there are three UDGs, and their stellar population properties have been summarized into a paper earlier this year. And more importantly, we have three intercluster light bundles uh, that locate between 100 to 200 kiloparsec from the BCG center. And this picture shows the locations of these ICL bundles. Uh, the color indicates the uh, surface brightness level in G band. And for the uh, ICL bundles, their surface brightness is, is around uh, 25 to 27 mag per square arc second. So this is very difficult regime for, uh, for the spectrograph. And here I show how well we are able to fit uh, the spectrum from the BCG center out to uh, 100 kiloparsec. The last spectrum is from one of the ICL bundle. And we can see the, uh, signal, the signal to noise ratio is pretty low. So this is very uh, challenging measurement, but it gives us useful information. We can learn from the data that the uh, velocity dispersion uh, in the ICL region is very high, and the stellar content uh, is old and metal poor. And this figure shows the radio profile uh, of the line of sight velocity 
um, and the velocity dispersion on the right, I use the same color for uh, the ICL bundles and their nearest uh, BCG, so we can just follow the uh, same color to see what happened beyond 100 kiloparsecs. So I think the figure shows that the three ICL regions have uh, reasonable velocities, and both BCGs have rising uh, velocity dispersion profiles out to 100 kiloparsecs. This shows that stars in the intercluster light trace the potential of the cluster instead of any individual galaxies. And this figure shows the radio profile of stellar age and stellar metallicity. So the stellar content beyond 100 kiloparsecs uh, are old, and their metallicities are comparable or more metal poor compared to the uh, region at, say, 20 to 35 kiloparsec. We have three dwarf ellipticals in our sample, so we further compare the stellar population uh, to them as well. So the stellar age, both the stellar age and stellar metallicities are consistent uh, between the ICL region and the dwarf ellipticals. So the formation of the intracluster light could be from um, partial tidal stripping of the uh, outskirts of massive galaxies and or the uh, disruption of uh, dwarf galaxies, but it seems unlikely that they are from the major, major merger of massive galaxies. Earlier in my talk, I showed a uh, prediction of uh, metallicity profile from simulation, so I want to end my talk uh, with a comparison to that. I'm comparing the gradients uh, predicted by the uh, illustrious simulation at the outskirts. Uh, this is from the uh, most massive stellar mass spin at redshift zero. We can see that uh, the three ICL data points, they are consistent or even lie above uh, the prediction from simulation. So I think this indicates that our observations are consistent with the hierarchical assembly picture uh, in the simulation. And it might indicate that the coma clusters the coma cluster has a richer accretion history than average. Okay, here is my summary. Uh, I will leave it here and take questions. Thank you. Thank you. We have time for one question. Yeah, Sarah said again. What, what is the estimate of the hot gas abundance in the coma at 100 kiloparsecs from X-ray observations? How does it compare to your uh, stellar abundance? Uh, that's a good question. I, I don't have the uh, exact number in my mind, but I think this, uh, this is consistent. I, I checked this before. It's consistent with the, uh, uh, the velocity dispersion we measured here. Okay, so thanks for all the, to all the speakers. We'll break uh, for coffee and come back at 11.15.